Welcome back to another episode of Commission Ed, the Air Force Officer Podcast. Today we are going to talk about a, a little bit different topic than we usually do. Usually we spend our time talking about how to get into the Air Force, the great career fields that are possible uh, once you receive your commission. But today we're going in a different direction. We're gonna talk about how and when and why you might want to leave the Air Force. Why are we gonna talk about how to get out and why? Well, uh, Spoiler alert, everyone's leaving the Air Force at some point. And frankly, if we can maybe discuss some of the reasons why that's gonna happen, it may help you make your decision of whether or not this is the right life for you. Yeah, absolutely. Just like any good O plan, operations plan, before you ever enter into a battle, a war, some sort of uh, engagement, uh, some sort of a conflict, you wanna make sure that you ha not only have a good strategy for conducting the war, but how do you get out of it? How do you exit and do it in a manner that is going to leave uh, yourself, your people, and everyone around you in a better position? Exactly. And the last thing we'll say as we you know, start this quick conversation today is one of the challenging things about this is everyone who is in the Air Force is probably gonna be unable to give you advice on how to get out because they're still in. So we've got a really special guest today, Colin, who's actually separated twice. Yeah, this is not normal to have someone who has been through the process of separations not only, want, uh, not only once, but twice. And just to put a little bit more context behind, behind that, I served four, four years on active duty, separated, joined the reserve, then I came back onto active duty, I served a temporary three-year tour, and then separated again to go back into the Air Force Reserve. So something that we should start with is how do officers stay in? It's very different from our enlisted counterparts. Our enlisted counterparts, they sign contracts. They have periods of enlistment. And depending on their promotion and their career field and timing and other things of that nature, they will continue to re-enlist for designated periods of time. That's not how it works for us. Outside of your first commitment, which depending on your source of accessions as well as your career field can be anywhere from four to 10 years. As long as you continue to accept new assignments, you can stay in as long as you're promoting on the appropriate timetable. Yeah, what Reed is describing here is known as the active duty service commitment. That is going to be anywhere from four to 10 years as he mentioned, but there's also another one that we have to be aware of, which is the MSO or military service obligation. For all officers, regardless of commissioning source or career field or anything else, that MSO is eight years, meaning you have to serve at least eight years either in uh, either on active duty, in the Guard or Reserve, before you are allowed to be completely done with your military service. Yep. And that why is that important to keep in mind? Well, let's say you get in and you do a four-year term, which is completely normal and there's nothing wrong with that but you separate and you go about your civilian life and a massive war kicks off and you're still within that MSO, there is on the books a law that allows them to recall you back to active duty in order to fulfill a military obligation. Yep, so you gotta be aware of these dates. You have to know what is your ADSC, your active duty service commitment. Where are you in the completion of your MSO, military service obligation, but let's say all those things are done. You've completed your ADSC. Your MSO is, uh, you know where you're, at, where you're at with your MSO. You've decided that it is time to separate. What is the first thing that you need to do? You have to go talk to your commander. The reason you have to talk to your commander is because this is a really, really important decision. Not just for the Air Force, but for you. There's a lot of emotions involved. These are really high stakes decisions. And the Air Force, genuinely cares for you and wants to make sure that you're making an informed decision. Yeah, your commander is ultimately responsible for your well-being and also for the proper execution of, of the Air Force. They probably have some information that you don't, and so you wanna make sure that you have all of the cards on the table, all of the information before you make a decision as, uh, as important and final as separating from active duty service in the Air Force. Exactly, so once you've alerted your commander, and you've started to take a few of the steps toward separation, you're going to have to go through some training, you're gonna to have to go through some out processing, which is essentially just making sure you're ready, you've turned in all your equipment, that sort of thing, and this timetable can take some time. Yeah, the whole separations process 
usually takes about 180 days or six months. And so if you're looking at, at leaving the Air Force, if you wanna separate and join the, the Guard or Reserve or just be done completely, you need to see when it is that your active duty service commitment is, is coming up or if it's already passed, know that you have, you have about six months to complete all of your out processing, which includes your medical, turning in equipment, setting up all of your, uh, your, making sure that you all of your documents are uh, lined up. You go through the the transition assistance program or TAP, and um, leaving the Air Force uh, in a good uh, good place uh, as you make your departure. And Colin, something you've mentioned before, and that we want to emphasize for our audience is the most important, or at least the most challenging, and the one that's going to take the most time is the medical side of things. They want to make sure that all of your paperwork is in order, that you are in a good place and that you've accounted for all of the various injuries and maladies that you've incurred in your service so that you can get the uh, care that, you, that is expected uh, for members who have served in the armed forces. So that's something that we want our audience to really focus on when that time comes. Yeah, you're gonna be working very closely with your medical provider. Make sure that all of these things are documented so that the Department of Veteran Affairs can continue to provide you the, the service that's required if you're no longer going to serve, or at least when you go into the Guard or Reserve, the, uh, those components understand uh, what limitations you may be dealing with as you continue your service. So we've gone into this process in depth on our podcast and we'll provide links in the description to where you can find that where Colin and I really go into details about specific timing, you know, what button you have to click at what time, what forms you have to fill out. But I think we need to transition to probably the biggest thing we need to talk about today, which is the why. Why would you, after all this time and effort of getting into the service, why would you leave it? So Colin, you've left twice. Why don't you start with the first time? Why did you leave the first time? Sure, I mean, I'll be totally upfront and honest, Reed. I was not happy with how the things were going for me in the Air Force. I felt like the opportunities that were going to best serve me were not available to me. I was not receiving the, the stratifications and ratings that I, that I felt that I deserved. And I was just burnt out. I was not happy with how things are going. And you know, sometimes that's gonna be the case that you're not happy with your service and this is one of those reasons why you do need to go talk to your commander before you separate, because these emotions, they run high and they run deep. Yeah, I mean, you'd had two combat deployments in that short four year time. Um, you were, you'd married, you were starting a family and there's a lot going on and making those decisions is really challenging. And we wanna set at the outset, right? Not everyone is in for life and that's totally fine. Everybody has different reasons. I haven't separated and I kind of intend to do a full 20 year career. And so Colin, as we've gone through this process and, and you know, with the podcast and everything, I've kind of had to think about my reasons and, you know, I want to talk about some of those. So the reasons that I can see why I would leave are an inability to achieve a goal that I have set for myself. If the Air Force is preventing me from reaching that thing, then I'm gonna know it's probably time. And that kind of lines up with something you mentioned, Colin. The things that you wanted just weren't gonna happen within the Air Force. Uh, the next thing is if you're no longer able to give everything. Uh, I've seen a couple Air Force officers as they get towards that twilight time of their career. And that's one thing that I hear a lot is they're unable to give everything that's required because this is a really hard job. And it's not just a job, it's a lifestyle. I've moved seven times and five times in seven years and I've got another move coming up. That's tough on a family and that's stuff that you have to think about. You know, another thing is family. If my partner asked me to stop, that's another reason I would know that it would be time. Uh, I'm married, I have a family and those relationships are the most important thing in my life. It would break my heart, but I would do it for those relationships. Yeah, th that is a really important consideration to make is the relationship that you have with the people that you love. And uh, that was certainly the case for, for, for me as well. Uh, my wife was um, burnt out as well from the frequent deployments. But you know what? Here's the thing about after we separated. She missed being in the Air Force. Just as much as I missed being in the Air Force because those people that, you mentioned those people that you love, well, a lot of them are still wearing the uniform. And so that was my personal experience that after I had left active duty the first time, not only I, but my wife wanted to get back onto active service. And so that's where I found myself serving again and had a great time those three years, but then was required to separate again. 
We didn't want to, we wanted to stay on active duty, but that wasn't an option. And that's something to, to also bring up is that sometimes the Air Force will no longer require your service. And that is not your choice and that is not a fun place to be. And that was the circumstance around my second separation is that I wanted to keep serving, but I couldn't. And so I had to separate again. Yeah. The last thing for me that will be that key sign that I know that it's time for me to leave is when the Air Force forces my priorities to be irreversibly changed out of what I want them to be. You know, I've already mentioned how important my family is to me. And I feel that I've been able to balance that very well and be able to continue to serve. Uh, sometimes I have to give a little bit more to the Air Force than I'm happy with, but then sometimes I get to take a little bit more for the family. It's that give and take. But there will come a point, and I, and I can see that coming, where the Air Force will be asking more of me to change my priorities more than I'm happy to do. And that's one of those things that I'll know it's time. Yeah, for sure. What, regardless of what the eventual reasons are, no matter who you are, you are going to eventually have to take off the, the uniform. Whether it's sooner or later, whether as a captain or as a four-star general, the chief of staff of the Air Force, every single officer will eventually have to confront this time and place where, you, where they have to leave active service and go do something else. Exactly, and we wanna be there to help you along that journey. Colin has separated twice. That is crazy, it's <laughs> never happened. And he can give you a lot of really good advice and his, his tips and tricks on how to make that happen. Engage with us in the Heritage Room. Uh, click, like, and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, our audience, whether through our social media or on the podcast or our email. We'd love to hear from you. Anything else before we wrap up today, Colin? Separations, uh, separating from the Air Force is not fun. It is not easy, but you don't have to go it alone. We mentioned earlier that those who are currently serving have never done it before, but there are people who have done it and are willing to help you. Could be me, could be uh, somebody else. Please don't go it alone. Let us help you. Thanks for joining us today on Commission Ed. 